Tonight, uh, God gave me these scriptures, and I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. Just let him lead. But I do know this. I know that, uh, that we are people that belong to God. Amen. We are God's people, and uh, we are serving... We are serving an awesome God. We are serving an awesome God. You know, uh, I was talking this morning. I was talking this morning about how that today, today, you know, uh, during the the time whenever the priests would go into the to the holy of holies, and uh, that priest when he went in, he would have veils that that hung from his from his uh, skirt and. Uh, and whenever he went in there, before he went in, they would tie a rope to his ankle. They would tie a rope to his ankle, and he would go into the Holy of Holies. And if he had any sin in his life, the bells would quit ringing. When the bells would quit ringing, somebody would get a hold of the rope, and they would drag him out. He would be dead. He would be dead. You can't go before the Holy of Holies with sin in your life. Amen. You can go in... And you can, uh, you can try to, to push things over on God, but they won't work. Right. They won't work. You, you might think, well, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this little sin today, but uh, I'm, I'm not, ain't nobody else going to pay any mind to it. Ain't nobody going to know anything about it but me and you, Lord. But that's the bad part. That's, right. that's the bad part. He already knew about it. He knew what he was doing. And, you know, we all, that listen to me tonight. We all, sometime or another, we're going to slip up. Amen. And if somebody says, well, I never sinned. You just did. Amen. You just did. You told a big old lie. Yeah. And that ain't, that ain't good. That ain't good. That won't stand. And whenever you go before the Lord, that ain't going to stand. That's right. I begin to think, and I begin to read some scripture here while I go. I'm fixing to read it here just in a minute. Remember this. Next Thursday night, we have church here on Thursday night. Amen. Come if you can come. Invite somebody to come out. Invite somebody to come out to be in church with us. But listen, let's come out for a, not just to make have an audience, not just to have a bunch of people in the church. Let's come out to worship God. Amen. You know, we uh, we we live for God all week long. Mm -hmm. We live for God. This is a house of worship. Amen. This is a house of worship. If you're coming here to live for God, you're coming for the wrong reason. You better be living for God before you get here. Amen. Then whenever you come into the church, you come in with the worship in your heart. Amen. You come in with the uh, with saying, well, you know, whenever you come in with the worship in your heart, like I was talking this morning, you will come in, and whenever the music begins to play, and people begin to worship God, it's not long till you see people begin to raise their hand and begin to worship God. Amen. You know what? Whenever we begin to worship God, you know what we do? We get His attention. We get his attention. There's one thing that God cannot do. He cannot turn his face from a praise. He cannot turn his face from a praise. Do you want something in your life? Do you need an answer in your life? I'll tell you how to get it. You can pray and pray till you fall over in the floor. But let me tell you something. If you want something for God, if you want to get his attention, you know, whenever you get God's attention, you can begin to talk to him. He will listen then because you've got his attention. You want to get his attention tonight? Let me tell you what to do. Don't sit there on that seat right now. I'll tell you what you do. You begin to give him a praise right now. Begin to lift those hands up to the Lord and begin to praise him. Say, God, I love you tonight. I praise your holy name tonight. I worship you. I worship you, Almighty God. I worship you. I praise your holy name. Begin to praise Him tonight. Amen. Now whenever you begin to feel the praise, as the praise begins to go Thank up, the, the glory will begin Amen. to come down. Amen. And you'll begin to get to feel the presence of the Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, we all make mistakes. I was talking a while ago. We all make mistakes. And sometimes the mistakes that we make, we can correct. Sometimes we can correct the mistakes that we make. And, and, but there is times that we make mistakes and it's pretty hard to correct them. I know. In the book of Titus, in the third chapter, starting in the third verse, I'm going to go back to the first verse. Put them in mind to be subject 
to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, and to be ready to ever good work. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawler, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. We're going to pull ourselves together tonight, okay? We want to pull ourselves together tonight. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. We as a world today are brought into this world with a spirit that is subject. It is made to do one thing and that's not good. We were brought into this world that's why that the repentance came into the world. That's why that Jesus, you know, I'm going back into the, to whenever that, uh, that the Hebrews was coming out of Egypt and how so many times, Sister Ellen, they were disobedient in every way that they knew how. They took a journey, it took them 40 years. If they had reminded the Lord and done what they wanted to, they could have made the journey in less than six months. Five months at the most, they could have made the journey. But you know what they done? They Every time that they turned around, they was disobedient in some way to God. Now you say, why are you bringing up the Hebrew children? All right, let's just go from the Hebrew children to the year of 2014. That is an awesome change from the year of 2000, whenever that the Hebrews come walking across the desert and trying to find their way to the promised land that God had promised them. That now it's an it's an awesome change from there to now. Right. But I had a lot of things has changed in a lot of ways. The way that we live today. I was talking this morning. How many people tonight in this building has a computer? How many people in this building tonight can sit down at a computer and figure out something that would take anybody a, a lifetime to figure it out? But instead, you take and you punch a few numbers in, or you punch a few things in, and automatically you have got the knowledge that people seek for, has been seeking for for years. Right. Now, just stay with me. And 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 this this is a time that has changed through the years. Whenever the horse and buggy, that you know, I'm not very old, but I remember horse and buggy days. I remember whenever that they used to take. And my dad used to used to take and hook an old mule and, and an old horse up to a wagon. And, and after we stripped the back all off forever so long, uh, through, the, through the fall of the year, my dad would load up a, a, a big load of tobacco and he'd head for Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And he'd done it in a, in a horse and wagon. You see very little cars on the road. Every once in a while when you see one, well, you'd have to hold on to the horse and the mule because they would go out into the cow pasture. Stay with me. Now this thing has changed in over the period of the small, small period of time. Time has changed in such a way, you know the Bible says unless I shorten the days, unless I shorten the days, there will be no faith left on the earth. There's not going to be anybody that, be, you know, I wonder sometimes why, you know, and a lot of times we wonder why that the healings and the power of God is not working in the church like it is today. Why? Because uh, we have lost the faith. We have lost the love of God. We have let everything else come between us and God. We have let malice. We've had hatred. We've had all the things that I just read to you a while ago has creeped into the church uh, that we're living in today. There is people out there today that don't care about God, but they will go to church. Uh, there is people out there today that don't believe that there's a God, but on Sunday morning they'll be sitting on the front seat. There is preachers in the pulpit today that is preaching the Word of God, uh, are trying to preach the Word of God, and they don't even believe that God exists. Uh, right. This world that we're living in uh, has come to the place uh, that the devil has taken over. He has had the foothold uh, that he needs. Uh, he takes people and he leads them around by the nose, uh, and here we are today. If we're not awful careful, we will get drawn back uh, into the same thing uh, that Paul was preaching and teaching whenever he wrote this book. See, Paul was in prison when he was writing this book. 
He was in prison, and he knew that his time was just about up. He knew this time was just about up, and he began to tell the people this. He began to tell them, For we ourselves also were sometime foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lust and pleasure, living in malice, envy, hateful, and hating one another. Now here's Paul. He's sitting in a cold, dark, damn prison. And he's beginning to read. And he's beginning to write. But as he begins to write, God begins to take this thing, and he begins to say, Look, Paul, I want you to write this right now. But 2,000 years down the road from here, I'm going to be, I'm going to read, this scripture is going to be read. It's going to be read to Mark. It's going to be read to, Ma, to Ed. It's going to be read to Mousy. This thing is going to come out. The same spirit that Paul had in that day is in the church today. The same spirit of hatefulness, the same spirit of envy and strife, and the things that goes on in the church today is still just like it was whenever Paul was in the old dark prison as he was writing the things down that God was giving him. Now we're living in a day right now that we ought to be the most privileged people that ever, we are the most privileged people that ever lived. We're living in the greatest time that ever was. You say, yeah, but we're going through things that, uh, that a lot of people didn't have to go through. You know what? The day that we're living in right now, we have an open door to the throne of God. Amen. We have an open th a door to the throne of God. If you want a judgment from God, you know what you got to do? You got to talk to Him. You got to tell him what it is that you need. You know, God. You know, uh, people say, "I know. I, I just know you used to be praying." God knows my thoughts. He knows what I'm thinking about. Sure, he does. He knows everything about it. But you know what he wants? He wants somebody to come to him and tell him that hey, that what it is that they need. Right. And during the time you're telling him what you need, you need to say, "God, and I love you for going to that cross." and died on that cross for me. I love you because that you went to that cross and you laid down your life down. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, they didn't take your life. They didn't take Jesus' life. Oh no, my friend, they didn't take it. You know what he done? He went to that cross, he laid them hands down, and he laid them down willfully. He laid them down that we could have listened to what they said. It says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to the mercies, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. Regeneration, it means to become again. To become again. You know what? A lot of people think, well, you know, we're, we're Pentecostal people, and there's people, that preachers out there that preach today. You know what? If you got the Holy Ghost, if you get the Holy Ghost and you speak in tongues, uh, you've got it made. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, you don't have to worry about another thing. Uh, my friend, I don't mean to bust your bubble, but I'm going to. You know what? Whenever that we get filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, we need that feeling. We need that refreshing. Uh, we need that refilling every time that we walk into the church. Every time that we walk the streets. We need to tell people about the Lord. We need to worship God. We need a refilling. We need to come back again every time that we can and get that renewing of the Spirit of God that we can lift our hands when we come to church on Thursday night and begin to praise God. We need it when we walk into the church on Sunday morning when we begin to praise God and God begins to move through the congregation. Have you ever been in the church whenever God begins to move back in the back of the audience everybody's sitting in the church everybody's got their mind on something uh, on the Lord maybe and somebody old lady some old lady or some old man sitting in the back of the church uh, and all of a sudden he begins to raise his hands up just a little bit and he begins to say Lord uh, I love you today I praise you Lord for saving my soul uh, I thank you because of what you done for me uh, and it uh, long to that little old lady that sits across the aisle uh, she begins to feel that same spirit uh, and that uh, God begins to move through the congregation people begins to work and they begin to raise their hand and begin to worship God it works in the same manner you come into the church on Sunday morning 
you come in with a lot of stuff on your mind that you don't need on your mind, then you know what's going to happen? You're going to sit there and it's not going to be long till the person across the aisle from you is going to get that same spirit working on him and it's not long it's all over the church and you couldn't get God, the, the Lord to move in the church for no reason. It's no way, shape, form, or fashion. Why? Because somebody came in with a lot of garbage that didn't need to be in the church. Amen. Amen. Have you ever seen that happen? Yep. We are living in a day right now that, like I said a while ago, we're the most blessed people that ever lived. We have got the promises of God. Well, I can start into the Bible and about every, every, every chapter in the Bible you can get a promise. And what we got to do, we got to get to the place, we got to get all this stuff out of our minds and all this envy, the strife, and the things that's in the church today. Like we have to preach and try to drive them out. You know, used to, we used to preach to try to get souls saved. Now we, get, we, don't get, we don't have that opportunity no more. You say, oh yeah, you do when people come in. Yeah, you do. But let me tell you something. It takes more preaching to the church to keep the ones in the church that's there and keep Amen. them the word that they can obey God that it takes too much time for that. We need to be getting souls saved. We need to get the power of God working in the church to, to where that when the sinner and the ungodly comes into the church, they won't sit on the back seat. They'll either do one or two things. They'll either leave the church or they'll get up off that and run to that altar and give their hearts to the Lord. We've got to get to the place that we're willing to say, God, I don't want this in my life. What are you talking about that you don't want in your life? You know, a lot of people preach, but they don't tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceiver, Deceived, serving doctors, lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hating and hating one another. I want you to look at the person next to you and tell them, say, I love you. Now I want you to look at them again and say, and I mean it. Now, do you want the power of the Holy Ghost to come into this building tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you want the power of God to begin to work in this building right here, right now? I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I feel the movement of God in this place right now. Hallelujah. If you feel that movement, as you begin to feel that movement, if you begin to feel the power of God, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to begin to take those hands and begin to raise them up to God. I want you to begin to give Him a worship. I want you to begin to give Him a praise. As you begin to give Him a praise, let me tell you something. It's not long to Brother Ed's going to feel the power of God. And then it's not long to somebody across the aisle is going to begin to feel the presence of God. Whenever we begin to feel the presence of God, we know what we're doing. We're we're driving out strife. We're driving out envy. We're driving out hate. We're hating. We're not hating one another. But the love of God is beginning to shift through the building. God is beginning to work. He's beginning to tell us that He loves us. You know what? God is love. If you love one another, you love God. He said, how can you love your brother who you have seen? How can you love him if you can't love him? How can you love God who you have not seen? How can you love him? Amen. Hallelujah. It's time that we begin to wake up, people. It's time that we begin to wake up. The power of salvation has been planted within us. We have the plan today that whenever Paul was preaching, the plan was just beginning. We're 2014 years down the road. We're the most blessed people that ever lived. We don't have to worry about coming to church and somebody saying something about it. We don't have to worry if we get up and worship God. Nobody's going to say anything about it. If you love God, tonight, you've got to worship in your heart. You've got the freedom. You've got the liberty in Jesus Christ tonight to raise those hands and begin to praise Him. That's what He's wanting. He's wanting somebody to praise Him. He's wanting a praise from His people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, He said, He said, to praise me. To praise me. You, Give me that praise. I, I inhabit the praise of my people. Yes, 
Tonight, right now, he said, praise me. Praise me. Will you praise me? Get this pride. Get this envy. Get all this stuff that has been clouding your mind. Get it out of your mind. Get it back behind you. Let that thing go and begin to give God the praise. And the God will move in the congregation. He will lift people up. He will give you the strength that you need. He will give you what you need to make it from day to day. He will give you a regeneration. He will let you come again. Thank you, Lord. He'll let you come again into Him. And then you know what? There is refillings and refreshings of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Do you need a refilling? Do you need a refreshing tonight in the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. If you need a refreshing in the Holy Ghost tonight, I'm going to tell you how to get it. I've been told you. Put the strive, put the hatred, put all that out the back door and begin to praise Him and begin to tell Him how much you love Him. And you know what's going to happen? The power of God is fixing to start moving and people that's going to start worshiping God. And whatever they do, the eyes of the God Himself, Jesus Christ, will walk into the building. And when He comes into the building, let me tell you something. If you need a healing, if you need deliverance, the deliverer is in the house. The healer is in the house. Everything can be taken care of. All we got to do is believe in Him. Hallelujah. 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 Ain't this something whenever we know that we are Christians, whenever we know we belong to God, Hallelujah. we got the promise of eternal life. You know, we were just talking this morning, and we were talking about what it's going to be like. And I, it was kind of brought up on what it was going to be like whenever we leave this world and we move into that new heaven and new earth. Hallelujah. Won't that be a time? Won't that be a time? You know, see, we got something to look forward to. We got something. We got the hope of eternal life. I want somebody to turn to somebody and say, we've got the hope of eternal life. We've got the hope of eternal life. Whenever we leave here, we know where we're going. Amen. You say, I, but I can't know where I'm going. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There's a promise in the Bible. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a promise. That's a promise. Now tonight, do you believe in Him? Do you believe in Him? Do you believe that tonight uh, that whatever you ask of Him in faith believing, He will do it? Amen. He said, whatsoever you ask in my name in faith believing, He said, I will do it. That's about as plain as you can put it. That's faith. That's faith believing that He'll do it. Believing that He'll do it. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you tonight to close your eyes just for a second. And I want you to picture, I do this every once in a while. I don't know how you picture Jesus Christ. You may picture Him as a picture that you got on your wall on the, in, your, in your house. You may picture Him as that. But right now, i tell you what I want you to do. I want you to picture him sitting right here on this altar. I want you in your mind right now to picture him sitting right there on that altar. I don't know how you vividly see this, but I want you to think about it. Jesus has walked in the door, and I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's walked in, and he's sitting right here on the end of this altar. Hallelujah. Shalom Abu Shatarai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's sitting here on the altar. And he's looking around over the audience. And he sees you. And he reaches out that hand that's got the nail prints in it. And he says, Mike, I love you, son. He says, Carol, I love you. Shannon, I love you. Hallelujah. And he reaches out that hand. Hmm. <coughs> Mike, 
when we peer into his face, we see him as he is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Paul said, I don't know what I'm going to be like, Amen. but I do know this. Be like Hallelujah. I'm going to be just like him. Hallelujah. One of these days, uh, we're going to walk up before the throne of God. We're going to walk up with a new body. Why? Because we put malice. Uh, we put hate. Uh, we put all the things that is written in the Scripture. We put them behind us. Uh, one of these days, we're going to walk up. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, uh, and there was a number which no man could number. And they were dressed in white robes uh, with palms in their hands. Uh, what were they doing? Uh, they was getting ready to, for the appearing uh, of Jesus Christ when he steps out on the pedestal and we see him as he is we all them people and us together begin to wave those palms and begin to praise him and to give him praise my friend let me tell you something we'll walk from here into the portals of glory hallelujah won't that be a day won't that be a day but you know what we got to do? We got to put all these things that is tormented, all this torment, all this deceitfulness, all this me, all this stuff that is everything but meekness, all the hate, all this that has been put behind us. Unless we put this behind us, we're not going to walk into the portals of heaven. That's right. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. Now listen, I'm going to read just a little bit further. Listen to this. <clears throat> I'm going back to the fifth chapter. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He saved us by the washing and renewing regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. We don't have to be lost. Hallelujah. That being justified by His grace, we shall be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We've got something to look forward. We are almost home. I know there's people in here tonight, we've got kids in this audience tonight. And then we've got some that's almost as old as I am. We've got some that's been here for a long time. But let me tell you something, my friend, we're almost home. We're just about ready to cross over Jordan. They can call it crossing over Jordan. You can call it about moving on a on an old gospel ship. You can call it whatever you want to. But you know what we're fixing to do? We're fixing to grab these, fixing to break loose from our feet. And we're fixing to come out of that grave. Or we're going to be close from the gravity of this world. Uh, and we're going up to meet Him in the air and forever Amen. and forever and forever to be with Him. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about y'all tonight, but I love the Lord. Amen. I love the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, I love you Jesus. Jesus. Why? Because, because you, you went to that cross. You give us a hope of eternal life. Yes. Amen. You know, that's what we're supposed to be telling each other. We're supposed to be spreading this around. You say, I'm a Christian. I don't make no difference. Sister Helen, we've got the hope of eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody tell me, Oscar, we've got the hope of eternal life. Oscar, we've we got, got the hope, hope of eternal life. life. All we got to do is latch on to it and take hold of it. It is ours. Amen. <laughs> oh, thank God. Don't you love Him tonight? Amen. Don't you know? You know what? There... Somebody was talking this morning about heaven and about whenever we get to heaven. We won't, we won't, you know, it's going to be a bunch of sad people whenever, whenever that we leave here. I'm talking about God's people. All these hospitals are going to be out of business. All these funeral homes, they can pour out their embalming fluid. All this will be behind us. We're not going to look back. Them that have gone on before us, you know what we're going to do? We're going to join with them. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that they're coming down and we're going up to meet them. And they are. Hallelujah. Won't that be a day? Won't that be a day when that trumpet sounds and the, and the trumpet sounds and we begin to hear? You know what? 
I, I explained it. I seen a little thing on TV the other night. And it, it really stuck to my heart. It really done something. There was this church full of people. A lot of them was praying. And, and a, lot, a lot of them was, was in the church. And all of a sudden the trumpet of the Lord sounded. There was a lot of people that was still left in the church. And whenever they were left in the church, all of a sudden it dawned on them, something has happened. Something has taken place. Let me tell you, my friend, tonight, something is fixing to take place. The God, the trumpet's going to sound. And Jesus Christ is going to split the clouds of glory. And we're going up to be with Him if you're ready to go. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're ready to go, we're, we're leaving here. Gravity's going to break loose from our feet. And out of here we're going. Hallelujah. We're going to move like a wind. Yes. We're going to be gone. Hallelujah. You know, tonight, if I was having it to say anything, I'd like, here's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see some renewing of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You might say, yeah, but I've had the Holy Ghost. But I've had it for over 50 years. That's fine. I'm glad you got it. But I want to see it in motion. Amen. I want to see somebody. I want to see somebody worshiping God. I want to see the Holy Ghost power of God as it begins to move through the house. I want to. You know, on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, something happened. Something happened. A lot of things just happened in this world. They've invented the atomic bomb and everything else. But nothing has ever happened like it happened on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Nothing has ever happened. Nothing has ever taken place like it took place on the day of Pentecost. Thank you. They were all sitting in that old upper room. They was waiting for something. They didn't know what they was going to get. They knew that the promise was coming, Sister Hale, but they didn't know what it was going to be. Think about this. And all of a sudden, there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. 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 There was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And the Bible says, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. All the house. It began to fill the house where they were sitting. Wouldn't you like to, you know what? I would like to see the Holy Ghost power of God come into the building. The word that it sounded like a mighty rushing wind. And it began to fill the house. All over the house, everybody began to speak in tongues. Everybody began to spend the worship God. And the power of God began to flow all over the building. Hallelujah. You know, I was, I was, I was in this, this church right here one night. And the Spirit of God was moving through this building. It was moving awesomely. And I remember looking back through the audience. And I looked back over the, over the audience. All the way across the back of the church. Just about this height. Right above the audience of the people. It just seemed like it was a blue haze. That went all the way across the church. The power of God will be manifested in a way that we will know when He is there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But to get to this place that I'm talking about, we've got to get away from the strife, the envy, the hatred. We've got to put that behind us. We've got to say no more. I want to get to the place that I can feel the presence of God. Any time that I'm out on the highway, any time that I'm in the church, wherever I'm at, I want to get to the place that I can feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. You know, I've been driving down the road <coughs> many a time. I know we was coming. I, we'd be coming to church, at, and uh, I don't remember who was in the, in the in the in the car that morning. We had we had some, and and in the in the car we was coming to church, and, and we I put I just slipped the TV, uh, CD into the CD player, and he was telling about the God. And it began to, it began to, the song began to ball up inside of me. As it began to ball up inside of me. It wasn't long that I got the feeling the power of God. And all of a sudden I just screamed out, praise God. Have you ever been to that place? Have you ever been to that place where you feel the presence of God? You know what you've done? You know what you've done? I'll tell you what you've done. Whenever you get to that place, you put the envy out. You put the strife. You put the hatred. You put it all out the backside. And you're ready to be in the presence of God right then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love Him tonight. I love God tonight. I love to you know what my mission is? Is to see as many people saved as I can see. I want to see. And I'm talking about saved. Okay? 
I'm talking about people that come. Now, you don't have to. I'm not saying that you have to be in this altar to get saved. You just got to let your faith take hold in Jesus Christ. You've got to believe in Him. You've got to believe in Him. Whenever you believe, Lord, I accept you, I take you in, you know what? There's been a turnaround. There's been a turnaround. There's been a turnaround in your life when you do that. And when you do that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people confess faith. But they never process it. They never say, I know. You know, a, a lot of people put their name on a church book. And don't misunderstand me. I'm not knocking nobody's church book. If you want your name on a church book, more power to you. If that's what you want. I want mine in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. I want that name written down one day whenever that big old book is laid out and it turns it over and it says Oscar Walls and that thing. That's whenever heaven is going to break loose for this little old boy. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to begin to shout. Y'all might say, well, I'm going to say, oh great, I made it. Uh, not me. Not me. I think I'm going to be shouting. I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to be running. I'm going to be, you know, the Lord may have to slow me down. <laughs> Hallelujah. He may have to say, slow down, Oscar. There's other in this book here. Besides you. That's all right. That's all right. Ed, your name will be in there too. Amen. Hallelujah. Your name will be in there. Amen. And you know what? I bet the old brother Ed ain't going to be sitting there saying, Oh, I'm just so glad that my name did. You know what he's going to be doing? He's going to be shouting all over the place. Amen. Hallelujah. I love him tonight. I hope y'all got something out of this. We've got to put all this strife, all this hatred. We've got to have love in the church of God. Amen. We've got to have it. And I'm telling you what, I'm going to preach love as long and as I possibly can. I want everybody to love one another. Amen. And I'm talking about a godly love. I'm talking about a godly love. I'm talking about one that if the brother or sister is in need. It don't hurt you to go out and give them a hand. Right. Say, and, or to go to somebody. How many times in your life has it been that somebody would just come up to you and said, said Brother Mike, I love you, Mike. Amen. I love you, Mike. Amen. Martha, I love you. Amen. Have you ever seen the time that that right there would have moved them out? Amen. Yeah. That's right. Have you ever seen the time when somebody would just come up to you and say, I love you, sister. You know what he would have done? He would have picked up the whole load and carried it. See, he said he would. He said, I'll carry you load. He said, my, he said, your burdens, I will carry them for you. I'll lift you up. I'll give you the strength that you need. And I'll take you through. See, we're not in the same, just us. We've got the most powerful thing that could ever be that's working for us. We have the power of the Holy Ghost Amen. that works for us. My goodness. I love him tonight. I love the Lord. I love to tell people about the Lord. I like for you, everybody. I wish everybody could feel the like way I feel. I wish everybody could feel the way that I feel. Mike, come to the pit. I want you to play that amazing grace. Oh, that's good. <laughs> In the sixth verse, it says, Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. If you're a Christian tonight, if you're a believer in Christ, and you know without a doubt that you're ready to meet the Lord, there's nothing between you and walking into the portals of heaven. Hear what I want you to do. If you know that without a shadow of a doubt, you know what you need to be doing? You need to be raising those hands. Thank God I surrender it all. I give it all to you, Lord. I know that I'm ready to meet you. And Lord, I worship you. And I thank you because you went to that old cross and died on that cross. And shed all the blood that you shed. 
that I should have a hope of eternal life. The Bible teaches us to, to tell our brothers, to tell our sisters that we have the hope of eternal life. I love it tonight. And tonight, if you've been born again, and you know that you're ready to go to heaven, you ought to be the most happiest person that ever walked the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you, there's no way that I can explain to you what it's going to be like. I wish I could, but there's no way. It's not within me to be able to tell you what it's going to be like when we walk through the portals of heaven. When we walk through those gates into the portals of heaven, my friend, let me tell you something. It's going to be beyond our comprehension. We're not going to be able to understand nothing but that we are there. Hallelujah. Let's sing it. Thank God. Praise the Lord. I hope y'all got something out of this tonight. 